There's been a lot of excitement this week in the plug-in vehicle world, especially parts of it that focus on Tesla, on hearing the claim that it appeared Tesla had started putting charging circuitry into its Model 3 electric cars and maybe its Model Ys that were capable of two-way charging. For most people out there, that translates to an ability to not only pull power from the electrical grid to charge the car's onboard battery pack, but also feed power back to the grid from the battery pack, converting the DC electricity of the battery into alternating current that can be used as mains electricity. Or, if you'd prefer, vehicle to grid. Traditionally, Tesla hasn't included two-way home vehicle to grid or vehicle to home capabilities with its cars. Indeed, when well-respected auto industry teardown analyst Sandy Munro recently disassembled a Tesla Model Y to examine the technology inside it, he didn't see any evidence of bi-directional charging capability. Yet software engineer Marco Gaxiola made waves this week when he published details of the Tesla Model 3 onboard charger he said he'd reverse engineered, claiming it was capable of bi-directional charging. He published a partial circuit diagram to back up his claim, and for several days, with no word from Tesla to the contrary, most people ran with the story that two-way charging was going to become a thing for Tesla via an over-the-air software update in the future. We sat back on the story because we weren't convinced, not because we doubted Tesla's ability to offer such a feature or the claims of the person involved, but because the circuits shared were only partial circuits that were part of a larger whole. Without that whole circuit, it was hard to say categorically that it functioned in one particular way or another. To put it simply, we wanted more info to make our reporting whole. And yesterday, we got that when Tesla owner and electronics engineer, Ingenierix, aka Phil Sado, put the relevant part of the Tesla Model 3 charging system on a bench and took a look. What he discovered categorically debunks the V2G claims we had flying around earlier in the week. The partial circuit published at the start of the week showed MOSFET transistors all the way through the power circuit from the direct current side to the alternating current side, meaning power could theoretically flow in both directions with no issues if the circuit was accurate. For those who don't know, MOSFETs are essentially electrically operated switches that control where power can flow in a circuit and how much power can flow in a circuit. But during his investigation, Phil noted that while switches were used for the majority of the circuits on this power board, one stage, essentially a smaller part of the larger circuit through which power had to pass, used diodes instead. For those who don't know, diodes are electrical components which permit electricity to flow in only one direction. They're used in all sorts of circuits and can even be used to turn alternating current into direct current if you use enough of them in something called a full wave bridge rectifier. Following through the power circuits on the board, starting on the left where the alternating current came in, which has three different identical circuits for redundancy, Phil notes that lower end Model 3s only use two of those three circuits on the board, in case you were interested. The power passes through several transistor stages before hitting the diodes. And at that point, the current has a one-way street, passing only to the battery pack and not the other way around. So how did this confusion actually start? Honestly, I think it was a genuine mistake. You see, if you look at the circuit board in question, you'll see that each transistor has a number written on it next to the board, prefaced by the letter Q. Using standard circuit design nomenclature, this letter denotes a transistor. If you're interested, C on the circuit board denotes capacitor and R denotes resistor. The diodes that were incorrectly identified as transistors were in the same kind as package or external casing as the transistors. But on the board, there's a D in front of the number. D stands for diode. As Phil demonstrated, a quick test with some basic test equipment shows that current does indeed flow in only one direction. But Nikki, I hear you say, diodes normally look like this and not like this. <laughs> You'd be right, they do, at least in traditional electronics. But in this case, it appears Tesla decided to use the same physical package for the diode 
as it used for its transistors. All of the legs of the diodes are electrically connected to one another, suggesting that maybe there are multiple diodes all facing the same way in the same package. But now I'm getting into the weeds. Anyway, there you have it. Tesla's vehicles currently don't support V2G. And I should note that Elon Musk has in the past not seemed all that keen on the idea. Does this mean we won't see V2G ever? Absolutely not. Tesla could and may decide to include bi-directional charging in the future. If it does, we'll likely see some form of AC power takeoff capabilities with Cybertruck. But with a Tesla Powerwall and solar panel products, Tesla already has backup power and back-to-grid capabilities. And with Tesla's latest over-the-air update allowing Tesla Powerwall and car owners to shunt power into their car's battery packs in certain situations if the power walls are full or if there's a storm coming, I don't see V2G being a big feature for now. In the future? Well, who could say? Thanks again to Phil for letting me use some of the images from the original video in this one. So go check out his videos over at the Engineerix YouTube channel. I've made sure that there are links below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.